Hmm. Beyond Burger. I've heard of these things. Let's give it a shot. More. More. I'm gonna take a huge bite out of these testicles. Here we got a pair of testicles. Hey, what is up guys? So if you haven't heard of the recent up and coming phenomenon known as Liver King, he is this new figure that is a huge advocate for ancestral living through the consumption of raw meat. This is the most nutrient dense raw beef liver. The best thing to eat after you work out. Raw testicles. I'm gonna take a huge bite out of these testicles. This challenge is gonna be the raw testicle challenge. Here we got a pair of testicles. Eating fish eggs right out of fish on the spot. I eat seafood once a week with my tribe every Wednesday, skin on bone in sardines. And if you can't do that, you can do what a bear does. Go straight for the source and get the eggs. More. More. And even simulated hunts. He is essentially the opposite of your modern ethical vegan. More. Now, before we go on to what Liver King has said about vegans, I just want to say that I had no idea that our ancestors had access to anabolic steroids. I mean, this has come as a complete shock to me. Let me know in the comments below if you also were under the false impression that our ancestors didn't have access to anabolic steroids. I could have sworn they didn't, but Liver King is the embodiment of ancestral living, and as we can see, he's clearly very natural. Anyway, Liver King dropped a video where he quite literally gave Beyond Meat a shot. Hmm, Beyond Burger, I've heard of these things. Let's give it a shot. Apparently our ancestors didn't only have access to anabolic steroids, but also guns. I mean, just how mind blowing is this? So let's take a look at the caption and a specific comment that Liver King's account made that contained blatantly false information about vegan nutrition. The caption says, you want my thoughts on the Beyond Meat Burger? There you have it. There's Liver King's opinion. There's only one way I'm coming into contact with the Beyond Meat Patty. That's with a rifle in my hand, shooting the beefless beef and its health halo into the, wait for it, Beyond. Amazing pun. Precisely where it and other heavily processed substitutes belong. So it seems that he has an issue with heavily processed items, which, you know, I mean, to be fair, from a health perspective, it's probably not the best for you, you know, heavily processed items, but is what he's eating healthy as well? We'll see later in this video. He goes on to say, P.S. If you're a vegan dominating life, thriving with robust energy, drive, mental acuity, and free of low manhood, cavities, depression, anxiety, infertility, autoimmune, and chronic disease, then stay the course and keep kicking ass. If you're not, simply try the eight, quote, vegan friendly, end quote, ancestral tenants, sleep, move, shield, connect, cold, sun, fight, and bond. If you continue to struggle, try lacto-ovo vegetarianism. And if you continue to struggle after that, I guess, try some good old fashioned liver, raw or cooked, and let there be light. So no, if you're struggling on a vegan diet, I don't recommend you go ahead and consume raw liver or cooked liver, or even go about it from a lacto-ovo vegetarian diet. It's perfectly possible to obtain all the nutrients you need on a vegan diet. And we're gonna, you know, address that a little further as we see what Liver King's account said to a specific commenter that said, how about respect the other side? Why is that difficult to do? And here is the response from Liver King's account. And I'm saying Liver King's account and not Liver King because at the end of the response, we can see that the comment was actually made from Liver Queen, but I think it is safe to assume that Liver King holds the views expressed in this comment, given he would allow this comment to be made on his Instagram. Plus, if you've spent any amount of time looking into these ancestral living types, you will see that she is making claims about vegan nutrition that many raw meat eating ancestral types of people decide to make. So when referring to the commenter, I am just going to use the pronoun they to refer to both of them. All right, so let's get to the actual comment now. 
About vegans slash vegetarians, one thing is for certain, the world needs more people like you. The world needs more people that make such conscientious decisions with such principle-centered compassion and such regard for all walks of life. I have no doubt that this is why I've developed such kinship-like bonds with many of my vegan patients. Patients that have become wonderful friends, friends that I deeply care about. Okay, so we're off to a pretty good start. I mean, he's saying that he admires vegans in a way and how we kind of like respect life. He said he has some vegan clients, which I'm not too sure how that would work considering most of his advice is based on eating raw meat. Maybe he only advises them to do those eight vegan tenants that he mentioned earlier. Not too sure, but let's continue because this is the part that gets pretty bad. This is why it breaks my heart to see the devastating consequences of abstaining from our most basic nutritional needs, the critically important fat-soluble vitamins A, D, and K, especially MK4, because it's what fuels the body down to the electron transport chain, but is also involved in creating vitamin K dependent proteins, activating genes and making hormones. I have the highest respect and admiration for those vegans that live with such altruistic values, many of whom I have the pleasure of calling my dear friends. Unfortunately, evolutionary biology is not on your side with the dietary choices that support your beliefs and your health is suffering. In honor of these bonds, I'm making a plea. I'm asking for your willingness to include the whole egg, including the shell, raw dairy and fish eggs into your diet. Not only will this address the root issue related to your oral health, but this will also address health issues related to mood, skin, gut, and fertility that go hand in hand with long-term malnourishment. I know this won't help everyone, but if it helps anyone, that's progress. All right, guys, well, that was a handful. Let's break down just how incredibly misguided this last part of the comment was. So they said that it breaks their heart to see the devastating consequences of abstaining from our most basic nutritional needs. They go on to talk about critically important fat soluble vitamins and imply that these kinds of vitamins are not obtainable through a vegan lifestyle. So let's talk about the fat soluble vitamins one by one. When it comes to vitamin A, it is completely false that vegans are inherently depriving themselves of vitamin A. Here's a clip of me breaking it down from a previous video where another ancestral living cringe lord made the claim that vegans cannot get bioavailable vitamin A. So let's just do some math real quick. The recommended daily amount of retinol is around 900 micrograms. Sweet potatoes have a baseline beta carotene to retinol conversion ratio of about 13 to 1. One cup of mashed sweet potato is around 328 grams. The beta carotene content of sweet potatoes have been estimated to be around 55 to 124 micrograms per gram. With this range, let's take an average value of 89.5 micrograms per gram. With this value of beta carotene per gram, one cup of sweet potato contains around 29,356 micrograms of beta carotene. When we apply the 13 to 1 conversion rate, we have 2,258 micrograms of retinol from one cup of sweet potato, which is more than double the recommended daily value. When it comes to vitamin D, Vegans can just take a supplement if they would like. Also, I would just like to mention that vitamin D deficiency is something prevalent in populations outside of the vegan population, and that supplementation is recommended not just for vegans, but for everybody. Vitamin K can be found in plant foods, so that isn't really a concern. If you're really worried about vitamin K and you don't wanna get it from plant foods, you can even take a vitamin K supplement. Before I go on, I just wanna say that there may be an objection from Liver King and his whole ancestral tribe, in which they say things like, oh, supplements are not natural, and this, of course, is irrelevant to nutrition. What matters in nutrition is health outcomes and if these supplements work, which they do. So who cares if they're not natural? Also, I just took a second to find out if he sells supplements, which he does. So if he's going to complain that my supplements are natural, well, neither are his because you don't find supplements in the wild. So they mentioned menetetronone as something vegans are deprived of. They described it as MK4, which is just one of the nine forms of vitamin K2 and you can get vitamin K2 from a supplement. There is even evidence to suggest that vitamin K2 is produced by our intestinal microflora up to human nutritional needs. So vitamin K2 supplements may not even be necessary for vegans. I also just wanna emphasize here how much getting enough vitamin K just isn't an issue for the average person. Most US diets contain an adequate amount of vitamin K and reports of vitamin K deficiency are extremely rare and is usually limited to people with malabsorption disorders or those taking drugs that interfere with vitamin K metabolism. In healthy people consuming a varied diet, achieving a vitamin K intake low enough to alter standard clinical measures of blood coagulation is almost impossible. So with all of this in mind, we can conclude that vegans are not inherently deficient or inherently putting themselves at a higher risk for deficiency 
in vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin K, and vitamin K2. So let's be clear about this. The liver king and liver queen are brokenhearted over the devastating consequences of vegans abstaining from our most basic nutritional needs when vegans are very well capable of satisfying them. Nice. So before we end this video, let's take a basic look at what liver king likes to eat and see if he is really as healthy as he comes off because he's really supposed to come off here as the embodiment of ancestral living and healthy living. So let's see, according to the science, if what he's putting in his body is actually good for him. Liver King here. I just finished doing Barbarian about an hour and a half ago. So this is what a Barbarian eats on a Thursday evening for dinner. First thing you're gonna see is about four ounces of turkey liver. This is grilled up with some garlic, some butter, some salt. This is delicious. We have 12 ounces of beef tongue that's been basting in butter. We got a pile of potatoes, but the centerpiece, the masterpiece is the raw bone marrow. We're gonna just scoop this right out and into the gullet. This is what I'm having for dinner, liver king out. So to start, we have four ounces of turkey liver, which converts to around 100 grams. From this alone, he is getting 388 milligrams of dietary cholesterol and 6.9 grams of saturated fat. This is a bit worrying considering we know from this meta-analysis of 395 metabolic ward studies that dietary saturated fat and cholesterol increase blood cholesterol, primarily LDL cholesterol, which we know is causally associated with increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Now, I know there are many other nutrients turkey liver contains which are beneficial, but this applies to McDonald's burgers as well. Of course, there are beneficial nutrients in turkey liver, but it's important to consider what getting these nutrients is coming at the cost of. In this case, getting these nutrients comes at the cost of increasing your risk of cardiovascular disease. Why not get these nutrients from foods that don't contain high amounts of saturated fat and cholesterol. Liver King is also consuming 12 ounces of beef tongue, which comes with 27.6 grams of saturated fat and 448 milligrams of cholesterol. He is getting his daily recommended amount of B12, but at the cost of his arteries. Taking a B12 supplement definitely wouldn't be a healthier alternative. Make sure your B12 comes with heart disease. The next thing listed is potatoes, which he doesn't give a serving size for, but I think you guys can guess what my biased vegan opinion is on potatoes. The next thing is bone marrow, which he said he'll be scooping out of the bones he has laid out. It's not too clear how much he will be consuming, but just know that one tablespoon of bone marrow contains 11.2 grams of saturated fat. And it's hard to imagine that he'll only be having one tablespoon of bone marrow in this meal. So I was gonna go through more of his meals, but they're all very similar and I don't wanna put you guys through, you know, seeing all that because it's all, pretty disgusting. It's quite clear that Liver King is under the conception that he shouldn't be concerned about the high amount of saturated fat and cholesterol that he's consuming on a daily basis. I mean, he even had at one point, I think like 50 whole eggs or even fertilized eggs in an Instagram video. Liver King here. I have 50 fertilized fresh eggs from my farm. I'm about to eat all of these. All of this disgusting shit aside, I think it's good that his diet entails him, you know, avoiding super ultra processed foods. But either way, I would love to see a full lipid panel and also his testosterone levels and just how natural they are. Two more things. I saw many people saying like, oh, he's going to die so young eating all of this saturated fat and cholesterol and animal foods and, you know, taking all these steroids. And I was just thinking like, isn't that him truly living ancestrally? When you think about the average lifespan of our ancestors, like maybe he's doing this and he's well aware that he's, you know, living like our ancestors or maybe dying like our ancestors, whichever way you want to interpret that. And lastly, his diet obviously entails the commodification, breeding, exploiting, and killing of sentient life. And this, for obvious reasons, is a problem. Animals don't want to be ripped apart and murdered for Liver King's Instagram. What a shocker. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Dude, even vegans don't get your weird, stupid, wannabe sense of irony here. Who is your audience? Nobody gets these dumb jokes. Dude, even vegans don't get your weird, stupid.